What's up, YouTube? It's the Shadow King, King Nazru, here with a review of the first chapter of Rosario Vampire 2. So, it's been about six months after, uh, Yokai Academy has been closed. Actually, over that. And, uh, Skunny's right on the bus, uh, where he's, uh, heading towards the, uh, the orientation for the reopening of the school. And he's also gotten a letter from, uh, Moko, uh, explaining some of the things that have been going on during the, uh, during the break and that she's really missed him. Then we get a good old conversation from old bus driver. It's kind of like a bit of an homage to the, uh, very first chapter of the first Rosario Vampire. Uh, the bus driver is saying that it's good he has friends this time, but his, uh, but he still warns him that Yokai Academy is going to be even more dangerous than it was before, especially with, uh, some of the mistakes Gunei's made. But Skinny says he's gonna stick it out, stick it out, uh, regardless of the risk. And, uh, then we cut to Moko walking with Yukari, uh, as the boys start adoring her, as usual. Uh, Yukari starts saying that Moko's beauty is too great for the boys, other than Skune, to see. And starts, uh, being on the guy's heads with, uh, with a giant mallet. What, no gold bathtub now? Uh, so, uh, basically getting hit in the head with a hammer at this time. And, uh, and mock Yukri, I mean, I mean, for hitting on Mocha. And, uh, mocking Yukri being, being in high school despite being only 12. Yeah, that's not something you should mock. When a 12 year old is smarter than you, you don't mock them. Uh, let's see, anyway, um, then she starts, uh, mentioning that, uh, the only person who could, uh, possibly be, uh, Mocha's boyfriend is Skune, and Mocha protests against this, uh, saying that she's, uh, that Skune is not, in fact, her boyfriend officially, um, and, uh, let's see, and, speak of the devil, Skune meets up with Mocha, and is delightful to buy her radiant present. Um, and they uh, take a little moment to enjoy each other's company. But, as expected, Kurumu is the first to arrive and ruin the moment by pouncing on Skune and smothering him with her breasts. Uh, as Yugri uh, explains to one of the boys who is asking why is, why is Kurumu over there, uh, she explains that Kurumu is Skune's worshipper. Then we got Misery on cue, stabbing Kurumu in the forehead by throwing an ice kunai, uh, and, and greets Skune from afar. And when the boy asks who that is, Yukri explains that Misery is his stalker to the boy. Even going so far as to break the fourth wall by mentioning the uh, first season of Rosario Vampire. Uh, so basically, the boy is the uh, general audience who hasn't uh, read Rosario, the Rosario Vampire chapters. Uh, I'm thinking that this is basically just going to be a, a chapter to help start things up and be a recap chapter for the most part. And yeah, let's see. Uh, Mocha, Kurumu, and Misere. Uh, start fighting each other for uh, getting in each other's way of reuniting with Skinny, while Skinny tries to keep the peace. Much to his uh, dismay, because he ends up getting in the getting in the crossfire. At her room, Miss Nekonami greets the first and second year students as she explains the rules of Yokai Academy towards uh, coexisting with the humans. See, I told you, it's an exposition chapter. Well, exposition and recap chapter. Uh, Kurumu is excited that everyone, specifically Skune, are all in the same class and that it, it must be destiny. Uh, however, Misere retorts that if it's destiny, um, they should be worried that since they found out Skune was human uh, at the same time, uh, the headmaster, Mikogame, uh, might find out and kill him according to the rules. Wait, are Wait, he doesn't know yet? Huh. Uh, okay. Uh, I guess they should look out for that. 
but uh, Kuruma says that they'll just protect him. Mocha starts uh, walking off, contemplating uh, her feelings towards Skune. And uh, just to, an to answer that dilemma, Yukri appears right behind her and tells Mocha to embrace her feelings for Skune, especially since she wants to have a bisexual relationship with her. Uh, Yukri uh, wa wants to wants Mocha to look at her magical invention called the Hore Hore, or in the Japanese version, the Hori Hori Kun, in order to make her more accepting of Yukri's fantasy. Uh, Mocha is suddenly hit by a smoke and falls into a trance. Yukri then gets Skune to come with her for a moment and leads him to Mocha, who was waiting in the graveyard. Nice choice of location. Uh, Skune uh, wonders, also wonders why she wanted to meet in a graveyard, and uh, why she looks so strange, too. Uh, then, Mocha asks Skune to kiss her, which ends up freaking Skune. Just go with it. Uh, Mocha says she uh, doesn't want him to kiss her on the list because she feels that it is improper, but instead kiss her on the thigh. Cause kissing on the list is so is so much scan I mean it's more scandalous than uh kissing someone on the thigh near their crotch. Anyway, but she says that the whole kissing the on the thigh thing is a symbolic vow to be in love with the person you just kissed and being in love with them alone. Uh, Skinny prepares to kiss her on the thigh, but Mocha is wrapped by ruse created by Kurumu's succubus illusion powers. Kurumu says she had a premonition that something like this would happen, and that if Mocha does something like th that again, uh, to come get her. Kurumu once again has Skinny feeling her breast and asks him to devote her his love to her. But Mocha chops the tree with a cross gravestone. Talk about the power of Christ. Uh, rescuing Sk and thus rescuing Skinny while Kurumu gets buried under a tree. <laughs> oh, physical pain. Uh, anyway, Mi then Mizre uh, starts to freeze Mocha's leg using the water hidden in the ground and says she won't let anyone take Skune. And Mizre takes Skinny for herself so she can, she can uh, make him get her pregnant, despite Skinny's reluctance. Uh, then, Mocha uses her strength to break the ice and throw another cross gravestone at Misery. Never underestimate the power of Christ. Uh, Kurumu and Misery wonder uh, how Mocha could possibly be so strong with the rosary still on, and which is supposed to uh, repress her power, and Yukri says it's due to the Hori Hori, um, since it removes all reasoning and purity like an aphrodisiac, and does some of the, she's able to tap into her inner strength, I mean to a certain degree. Uh, Yukri says that she got the idea for this invention inspired by Lilith's mirror. Damn you, Lilith! And, um, <coughs> anyway, uh, Kurumu and Mizre, uh, get revenge on Yukri by hanging her over a, a bunch of, uh, shards of ice and run to get Skune out of danger. Uh, Mocha tells Skune she's, uh, felt agony in her separation from him, and Skune felt the same as he prepares to kiss her. Then, out of... Shockingly enough, Skinny is suddenly hit in the face by none other than the rosary. Uh, Skinny uh, tries to get the rosary out of the way, but uh, pulls too hard and removes the rosary, and thus unintentionally uh, has Mocha change into Inner Mocha. And Inner Mocha is pissed. And, that, and that's saying something how we knew, normally use no Inner Mocha. As she is upset that uh, Skinny started getting friendly with her body, and worse still is the fact that she, 
is that he's on top of her. Uh, Skinny tries to explain, but Intermuck is too upset and kicks him while uh, telling him to know his place. Uh, then Intermuck explains that it was the aphrodisiac that was causing her to act like this, and that no matter what she did, her vampire pride will not allow a lily human to be with her. Uh, then Intermuck continues by saying, while she has split personalities, touching Muck, outer Muck is the same as touching inner Muck, since it's her body, and forbids him from touching her. Uh, Kuru uh, and Misery arrive to overhear this, and actually becoming relieved by this information. And Inamoka tells Skune if he plans on loving Mocha, she uh, has to seduce Inamoka first, uh, which is impossible. Gee, and people say I'm blunt. And then we, the chapter ends off the next day with Mocha saying she doesn't remember uh, any of this, and Skinny's depressed. However, she says that the aphrodisiac did have some good to it since it exposed her true feelings. And Skinny thought this was towards the ambulance relationship, but Mocha takes this as an opportunity to suck his blood. Um, this chapter served as uh, basically as a condensed version of some of the running gags of uh, Mazzaro Vampire. Like Mocha sucking Skune's blood, uh, Kurumu trying to rub, I mean, trying to seduce Skune, Mizre being a stalker, Yukri uh, up doing her childish shenanigans, all those sort of things. It was basically meant more for the people who were just starting with this season instead of uh, building out the characters. But it's okay since it's the uh, first chapter and it's basically just recapping everything. So, all in all, pretty good chapter, and we'll see uh, if uh, chapter 2 holds up.